So today, what I'm going to talk to you about is my entire journey of how I learned to code. Specifically, how I went from being a corporate lawyer for more than 12 years into the commercial world via startup as a non-technical guy and eventually teaching myself to code and then landing engineering roles, including at Google. So let's begin. Hello there. Welcome to my channel. Listen, after more than 12 years as a lawyer, I tried to start my own company. It was a startup and I was a non-technical founder. Sure, we managed to get a product to market. But you know what? I had a horrible time finding technical co-founders. In fact, I found a couple, but they ended up leaving. I was so sick of it. At the age of 37, I finally taught myself to code. Man, it wasn't easy. A year or so later, I ended up joining a startup as an engineer. And a year after that, I joined Google as an engineer. So listen, if you want to transition your career into tech, or you want to become your own technical co-founder, subscribe to my channel. So I'd like to emphasize to you, to give you some context, just how much the world has changed in the last eight to 10 years. It's 2021 now, and when I started my journey, so to speak, it was 2014. I remember this so clearly because I was non-technical. I was very hungry to get into entrepreneurship and to get into the startup world. I was still a practicing lawyer, quite senior in my career then. I remember going to Indonesia for work um, in 2014 and really, really thinking about what I wanted to do next. I knew that as much as I loved being in the law and I was surrounded by really smart people, it was very lucrative. I also knew that a part of me wanted to get closer to the business world. And so I ended up starting at the most logical place I could, which was to find the first possible role outside of the law where I could deliver value. What happened was in 2014, after doing all this introspection, I realized that the next logical step for me would be to try and get into a commercial role, a non-legal role, but in the business that I was in. At that time, I was at a very big Australian company called Telstra. I was a lawyer there, and I wanted to move into what's known as a commercial role. So I did. I ended up moving into a commercial management role. Now, I want to emphasize to you that I'm making it sound really easy, and most people do. That was a very difficult period because I was quite senior in the law. I was already about 10-ish years into the law, and I didn't have any track record outside of corporate law. And so even though people knew me to be a capable person, they had a problem when I asked them for a job, which was that I was not a de-risked proposition. In fact, it was not clear at all that I could do the job. I had complete, complete and utter faith in myself that I could learn everything I needed to do well because everything is learnable and I tru truly, truly, truly believe that. Because everything is learnable, I had no doubts that I would learn anything I needed to do well in the job. Unfortunately, hiring managers have another concern. You see, they've got a pool of candidates, and then there's me, who's one of the candidates, who's a significantly more risky proposition. So even if they knew me, and a lot of the people I approached for roles knew me, but they weren't necessarily confident enough that I could do the job, and often human resources weren't necessarily confident that I was the right choice, that I was a defensible choice. So even though I'm making it sound quite easy, between 2014 and 2015, the fact is that I really did have um, a number of applications going and I got rejected by at least three, maybe even four dozen people uh, and roles, both inside the company and outside the company I was at. Now, what happened was in 2015, someone did realize that there were skills that I had that could be useful outside the law and in their team, and I moved to that team. After that, about a year later, I was in the middle of my MBA and I was doing an MBA at that point of time to prove to myself and to others that I have the qualifications and I have the know-how necessary to deliver value in a, in a role. So I started that role in 2015 and then in 2016, right in the middle of doing my MBA, which I was doing part-time and at night while working full-time, um, I landed another role where I was in charge of running commercialization for emerging technologies, for example, you know, drones. And stuff like that. So really cool, very exciting. This was 2016. Uh, lots of interesting things happening in the technology world. All this while, by the way, and this is really, really important. All this while, I hadn't given up on my entrepreneurial dream. In fact, in 2014, I built an application called Remind. Now, when I say I built an application, what I mean is I paid someone else in India to build it for me for the Android operating system. I also started something called Noble Genie, which was going to be this marketplace of um, skills providers like lawyers and accountants and tax agents and conveyances and property lawyers 
a platform for them to come together and people to buy the services from them. So that was 2013 and 2014 when I paid developers to build this thing. They weren't really big products in the market at that point in time. And frankly, I sucked at execution, which is why none of them made it anywhere. Whereas two or three years after that, by 2015, 2016, and 2017, the market was quite full of, of marketplace providers for these kind of services. So I obviously had the right idea. I just didn't know how to execute. And I was not technical. So for me, trying and experimenting with things was extremely time consuming and extremely costly. So that was my entrepreneurial dream in parallel with me moving out of the law and into commercial roles. So then 2016 and 2017, I was doing these roles, which were, you know, non-technical roles, but working in the technology space. And then 2017, shortly after I got married, actually, um, I ended up quitting my corporate role and going full time into a startup that I wanted to build. Because by this time, I was so sick of not being able to actually pursue that dream. I was so sick of being held back by my own fear and insecurity and lack of technical competence. I just said, you know what? I'm getting more and more senior in my career. It's getting harder and harder to leave because I'm getting paid well. My, my career is successful. If I don't jump now, I will never jump. I will be trapped in this life forever. Oh, that's how I thought it was going to be. So I took that leap. I left the company, I started a startup, I incorporated it, I tried to do all the right things, and I went out and used a bunch of my savings to hire a team locally here in Melbourne to help me build Bushka, which was then um, a, a parking application, a smart street parking application for both the iOS and the Android devices. Still not technical at this stage, right? But I hire a team and they're really good and I know I'm burning cash trying to do this, but I really, really knew that if I didn't start and if I didn't make the effort, I was going to spend my life wondering whether I could have, what I should have done instead, etc. I was going to spend a lifetime regretting not having tried. So I was obviously in fairly lucky circumstances at this point in time because I had a little bit of my savings that I was actually quite happy to lose. Maybe happy to lose is an exaggeration. I was aware that in, in losing it, it would be uncomfortable, but it wasn't going to kill me or destroy the life I had built with my wife. So for me at that point in time, I knew that I wanted to try and win, but I knew that I could lose the money and I was going to try anywhere. So I went in and built Wushka. And several months later, things were looking good. You know, the application was coming together well, um, and I'm starting to get more and more confidence. I was building these small partnerships and relationships with local councils here in Melbourne um, with, with the view to try and demonstrate the parking application. And then my tech co-founder came on. Um, he was one of the guys who helped me build the application, really nice guy. And unfortunately, a few months after that, he was not able to continue and he had to leave. And there I was a good year or so in, with something that I knew could be quite useful. I just didn't have the skills. I didn't have the knowledge and I wasn't resourced properly enough to actually build out the company the way it needed to. And so I was faced with a choice. I was faced with a horrible choice of continuing down this path of startup, even though I had no evidence to prove that I was going to be successful or going back to my safe, cushy and incredibly tempting previous life as either a lawyer or in the in the business side of things, like I would have had roles in either in either world. And I remember that being a, a very, very difficult time for me because the pull, the gravitational pull of something that is safe and secure is really, really hard to overcome. And this is why jobs are addictive, right? The, the monthly wage is such an addictive thing that letting go of it I imagine I've never been an addict in my life, but I imagine it must be, you know, hard in, in a similar way, perhaps not quite as bad, but the ability to let go of a safe, secure job is, is very, very rare. So I was there facing this horrible, horrible conundrum. Do I continue with Wushka or this path that I'm on, whether it's Wushka or something else? Do I continue down the startup path? Or do I go back to my safe job and just forget about the whole thing? And a part of me really, really wanted to go back. Actually, a big part of me wanted to just drop everything and go back to the safe world and say, okay, I'd lost 18 months, two years of my life and a lot of money, but not the, not the end of the world. But then a part of me said, you know, the world that you want to be part of is a part of, is, is the technology world, is the startup world. And if you don't do your own startup, you could still work for a startup. But startups weren't going to consider people like me who had a very traditional corporate background and really no background in startup. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I'd always wanted to learn to code. Now, it's, it's worth talking about at this point in time as a quick interlude. Remember when I was talking about 2014, 15, and 16, 
trying to do my own startup, building those little applications or you know web, web applications and getting people to build them for me. I had tried to learn to code in each of the years, 2014, 2015, 2016. I tried to learn. And every time I gave up and I quit because there was too much information out there. I, I told myself that I could do it for free and there was the right thing to do in, in some senses, but I did not know how to do it for free. I did not know the pathway through all that free information that I need to take. So I tried and I tried to code. I tried, in fact, I knew nothing about programming. And I went straight into trying to build myself my first Android application. From no programming and zero technical knowledge, never even written a line of HTML or CSS in my life, I tried to go straight from that. Forget just skipping the Java language. I went straight into the Android framework and naturally I failed, right? But I didn't know that you couldn't do that or that that's a crazy thing to do. I just thought, hey, I want to build an Android application. Apparently, this is what I need to know to build an Android application. So this is what I'm going to do. No, there's a whole lot of foundational knowledge required, right? So I tried three, four times in those years to teach myself to code. And every time I quit because there was too much information, it was too hard. I would get stuck and frustrated. I wouldn't understand 90% of what I was reading and all these free resources because they all presumed a whole bunch of foundational knowledge. You know what? Someday, I'm, maybe someday soon, I'll, I'll put an entire set of videos around that topic because there's a lot to cover there. Anyway, the point is, I ended up trying to teach myself to code and fail. And by this point in time, it was 2017, 2018, my startup was starting to fail. And I said, okay, if I quit and I go back to my corporate world, I would probably never come back out of it again because I remember how hard it was the first time. But if I teach myself to code now, would I be able to do it? Would I be able to at least stay on in the startup world, if not as an entrepreneur, as an employee in a startup? And so that's what I decided I was going to do. For the fourth time, I was going to attempt to learn to code. I opened up my diaries from 2014, 15, and 16, and I saw all the things I'd done wrong. I saw all my frustration, all my heartache, all that incredible sense of you know, anger and frustration that I couldn't teach myself to code. And I took out my big learnings from that and I said, okay, all those things didn't work. So what am I gonna do differently this time? I ended up enrolling in a bootcamp, in fact, a couple of them in the US, and I almost ended up going there, but I didn't do it because of the exchange rate and I had to maintain a home here and be in the US. Um, so I didn't end up going down that path. But what I did is I started to teach myself to code. And I started to reach out to mentors and people who would help me. And eventually I made a breakthrough. And what, what I did write differently this time, what I did differently this time was I broke it down into the pieces that I knew were the fundamental building blocks because I had four plus years of failed efforts previously, right? And here's the important part. Once I figured out my pathway, using four years of wasted learning or wasted effort, I managed to teach myself enough code to get my first job as a developer in six months, maybe seven. I think it was perhaps seven, including getting the job. But I'd finally gotten good enough that someone would pay me. Now, in this entire process, I also understood the job market well because I'd been in it before. I'd been on the hiring side before. I'd been on the interviewing side before. So I understand how the job market works. Doesn't matter which country you're in, there are fundamental principles to the job market. Because I understood that, I'd already started my campaign, so to speak, of preparing to enter the job market well before I was actually ready to enter the job market. So in parallel with teaching myself to code, I was also starting my campaign and implementing my campaign to attack the job market. And so cut forward to 20, I think that was 2019. 2019, I started my first role as an engineer. Uh, 2020, I ended up moving and joining Google. And now we're in 2021. So this entire journey have a couple of big highlights for me, right? One, not knowing what you need to know and not knowing how to start probably costs people months and months and months of false starts. Because if you put a dollar value on every false start, you're probably wasting tens of thousands of dollars on your false starts. If you put a dollar value on your time, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars not getting the results you want. But most importantly, if you count what you lost by giving up, so let me put that in another way. If you give up, you have lost an entire category of outcomes in your life, right? And the cost of not having experienced those outcomes needs a, it needs a dollar value. 
quite simply, right? And that's how I started to approach my life. I gave everything a bit of a value to understand how to make decisions about them. Sure, some of them were arbitrary values, but I was now using the same currency, if you like, to measure my progress, to measure the outcomes, to understand how I made, how to make a better decision. So these are the big learnings from my entire journey to code. I can promise you one thing, that even though it's extremely hard or appears hard, it's very doable. This is nothing to do with your innate ability. Don't buy into this BS that the world tells you that coders are super smart geniuses. That is absolutely not true. Like any other thing in life, you have really smart people and you have fairly average people doing really well in a given career or profession. So don't hold yourself back but find the right tools and invest in yourself, invest in understanding what you need to succeed. And often it does require a little bit of a financial investment, but by no means does it require a full on university degree. Like the opposite of a university degree is not free. The opposite of a university degree is not having a credential that is a formal degree, but is still proof that you can do something. So whether it's a boot camp, whether it's hiring a coach, whether it is paying someone two thousand dollars to teach you to code, whatever it is, find your way and invest in yourself because saving time is way more than that little bit of money that you're going to end up putting in. That's my biggest tip for you: don't spend four or five years, or worse, don't spend that time and not succeed. I I got a little bit lucky because I succeeded partly because of my circumstances, but I know a lot of people out there just give up because their life is already on a good path or maybe it's not, but they can't find it in themselves to actually make that switch because they don't know where to start, they don't know how to continue, they don't know how to deal with all the setbacks, and most importantly, they don't know how to set goals and take actions towards those goals that are relevant for their life. Remember, somebody else's prescription that's not specific to you is not likely to take you to your goal because somebody else's goals are not your goals. Anyway, that was a really long, long conversation and I really hope it was somewhat useful to you. Please don't forget, like and subscribe to this channel because I'll keep dropping as much content as I can to highlight that entire story. But I do hope that you will comment as well at the end of the video or anytime you have any questions, try and engage with me in the video because I'm happy to respond um, in the comments. And also, if you have any suggestions on what else you'd like to hear about, put that in the comments too, so that I can then make another video for you, which you will find out about if you subscribe. So don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care.